sinned. You know the mistakes that we've made in our lifetime. Thank you that you offer forgiveness. Thank you that you offer restoration for our sins. We pray now that in this moment that we would examine ourselves, that you would help us to uh, see the areas in which we've, we've sinned, the areas in which we've fallen short, even the areas in which maybe we haven't uh, followed you as closely as we ought to. And God, in this moment, corporately, we want to repent of those sins. Would you bring forgiveness? 1 John 1, 9 says this way, But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. That's what Jesus does for us when he, when he went on the cross. Jesus brings forgiveness. And if you have chosen to place your faith and your hope in Jesus Christ, believing that he died on that cross for you to forgive you of your sins, then know that you are forgiven, that those sins have been covered over, and that like scripture says, and like some of the snow we've got out there, your sins are as white as snow because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're going to celebrate now as we uh, prepare to take communion. Uh, we'll have two stations. We'll have one over here and we'll have one over here. And, uh, as you feel ready, um, as the song plays, it's one of my favorite old Irish hymns. It's called Be Thou My Vision. Would you celebrate the joy and the forgiveness that you have in Jesus Christ? We here at Penn Forest have a very open communion. You don't have to be a member of our church to take communion with us and to celebrate with us. Um, all that we ask is that you have placed your faith and your hope in Jesus Christ. And you know what? If you haven't done that, this is a great time to do that. And this, this is the best time of all because there is no time like the present. Jesus wants to forgive you of your sins and walk with you through life if you'll let him. Would you pray with me as we prepare to take communion this morning? Jesus, thank you for being with us. Thank you for the way that you uh, care for us and watch over us. I pray now as we uh, celebrate your death and your resurrection, would you remind us of our forgiveness? Would you remind us of the love that you have for us? Thank you, Jesus, on the night that you were betrayed, you took bread and you broke it. You said, this is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, after supper, you took the cup and you said, this is my blood, which is shed for you. And God, we do this in remembrance of your love and your grace this morning. We love you, Jesus. Amen. As the song plays, would you just come and, and celebrate communion with us?
this morning, prepare to receive His tithes and our offerings. It's one of those ways that we can show God, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for all that you have done. And today, in this act of obedience, I give back to you. And, and I don't understand how 90% goes farther than 100%, but I'm giving back to you. And I thank you this day for your incredible love for me. And as we receive, give and receive His tithes and our offerings, we do it with a heart of thanksgiving, saying, thank you, God, for your many, many blessings to me. Amen? Amen. Ushers, come forward. Myra, would you ask the Lord's blessing on the offering this day? Heavenly Father, we bring, we return to you a portion of the blessings you've given us this week. May it be found that this week we use the money and the blessings you gave us to enrich the life of somebody else, that we shine with your witness to somebody else's life, that we offer a smile and hand that we are there for someone. And that will make this return to you all the glorious. Lord, thank you. Let us be found faithful.
I love that song. That's been one of my fa one of my favorite songs for a lot of years uh, because of the focus on Jesus Christ and shouting uh, to Him all the days of our life. Too often we sing songs, but we don't think of the words, and we don't make, we we don't allow it to transform us. We, we do the same thing when we read the Bible. We we read it, but we don't allow it to transform us through and through, and that's what it's all about. This morning we're going to. I uh, have a dedication of, a, of a, child, a couple children this morning, and I'm so excited about for David and Lisa to telling uh, this morning because when you dedicate children to the Lord, that's a significant ceremony. Children are a gift from God. Jesus cared for little children, and it was a, a common experience for him to bless the children. On numerous occasions, they brought the little children to Jesus so he could lay hands on them and bless them. And in Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16, it tells a story about that. It says, they brought young children to Jesus, or Jesus Christ that he should touch them, and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when, they, when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said to them, Suffer, allow the little children to come unto me, and don't forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. He blessed them. The task of raising children is a very challenging one, and it's one of the most serious tasks that we, we participate in in life, raising up our children. It's what we're, uh, those of us who have children, we've been called to do just such of that, and we have a responsibility. We have an incredibly huge responsibility. That responsibility is to teach them, to teach our children. We teach our children to brush their teeth. We teach them to take a bath. We, we teach them to act like a lady or gentleman, even though sometimes they don't act much like a lady or gentleman. We do try. We teach them to study and to get a good education. We teach them to take care of their body, uh, both physically and emotionally and so many other ways. These are all important. But the most important thing that we should be teaching them is to love the Lord their God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that only comes through our example. They say in the scripture more, or excuse me, they say in life more is caught than taught. You know, I, I have seen uh, parents that will tell their kids certain things. In fact, my father did this as well. I, I skipped church one Wednesday night. I didn't go to youth group. And when I came home late, and this going to church, my brothers had already gone. My father was still there. And he, he grounded me from riding my bike and doing some other things because I skipped church. And I was like, well, you didn't go. And he said, do as I say, not as I do. And isn't that so often the way it is? You know what? I am thankful that I didn't follow through uh, with his example of skipping church, of not necessarily abiding by the things that the Word of God says. It's hard. It's a challenge. But that's what we are called to do. We are called to live out our faith in front of our children by spending time with them, teaching them about God, and living it out. That means being godly examples at work. That means when you leave church today, not tearing the pastors up and having them for lunch without having them over. <laughs> that means living out a godly example of loving your spouse. That means living out a godly example of loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Praying, and they see that you walk. You know, my mom was not the perfect parent, but the one thing that she did is she did live out her faith. And I do, I watched on numerous occasions and heard on numerous occasions as she was knelt down next to her bed, sobbing and weeping and praying for us boys. I remember us, her taking us out to Botany Glen and, and going down near the Missinewa River where there was this huge rock. And, and she would take us over and she taught us the 23rd Psalm and other scriptures. Living out that godly example. Even though she wasn't the perfect parent. She strived. And when I 
I said, more is caught than taught. There was a lot that was caught because of her godly example that way. And that's one of our greatest challenges, to teach them about our children, about Jesus Christ. To teach these, not to just bring them and dump them off on Paul, who does an amazing job. <laughs> but seeing that what is taught at home is complemented by what Paul is teaching and vice versa. And I'm thankful that Paul is teaching them the Word of God in Kid Zone and on, uh, uh, on Wednesday nights and Sunday morning. That's incredible. But it's not enough, as Pastor Jaron shared just a few weeks ago. Pastor Darren, not Jaron. <laughs> <laughs> the church has, the, uh, has students roughly about 40 hours a year versus the number of hours the parents have them. What they're going to learn comes predominantly from home. And so when we dedicate our child to the Lord, it's not just coming and saying, here, God, I give the child to you without any responsibility. We're coming and we're saying, God, I give this child to you recognizing that I have a huge responsibility. A huge responsibility. And so this morning, God, I'm making this commitment to live out my faith in front of my children. That's why it, on the brochures out on the table in the foyer, it says parent and child dedication. Because it's just a, much, a commitment on your part to be that godly example as it, is on, uh, as it is when it comes to saying, I'm giving my kids to God. So, I'm going to ask the hotelings uh, to come forward this morning. And anyone else that's coming along with you. Uh, to come up here and with their with their youngins, uh, Colin and, and Tristan. And they're going to bring a surrogate grandmother along with them this morning, Patsy. Because you know what? As they come forward this morning, it's not only their responsibility. But it's our responsibility to be lifting them up in prayer and being godly parents, or grand, being godly individuals to these children. And I'm thankful, I'm thankful that there were men and women at my home church that I grew up in that were that godly example to me. So now, Dave and Lisa, uh, are you, as you stand here in front of this congregation, committing to dedicate your children to the Lord this morning? Is it your desire to teach them at the proper age the understanding of who Jesus Christ is and to encourage them to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, to confess their sins to Him, to obey Him, and give their lives to Him? Is that your intent? All right. You promise to pray for them and to uh, help them grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and grow in their spiritual life throughout the days of our life? If so, say yes. yes. Do you promise to train Colin and Tristan in body, mind, and soul for service and fellowship to God? Yes. yes. All right. And do you promise to do all you can to lead them at the proper, at the proper age when they come of age and they start asking those questions, uh, saying, I, I want to be a Christian, to lead them into a personal relationship? with Jesus Christ. If that's the best. All right. We're going to pray a prayer of dedicating these young men to the Lord this morning. And can I hold him without him crying on me? Okay, good deal. Your name's Colin. James, right? Father in heaven, this morning, I just bring little Colin James to you right now. And I ask, Father, that you would just uh, put a hedge of protection around him that you would just guard him and direct his ways from a young from a young child, Father. I pray that he would put his trust and hope in you and that he would choose to serve you. I pray that you would just be with him and that you would protect him physically, emotionally, and spiritually, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, for Tristan, that you would do the same for him. Thank you for his life. Thank you for what you're doing in him. And, Lord, may he choose to serve you all the days of his life. Thank you, Father, for these two incredible young men. And then I praise you for David and Lisa. And I pray that you would just be with them and, and that they would serve you all the days of their life. That you would be in the middle of their marriage. That 
they would not only teach these boys to love you, but they would teach them to how to have a, a godly marriage because they are loving each other. They're putting you in the center of their lives and in the center of their marriage. They've got a commitment to their vows, to, to communication, to keeping romance alive, and to keeping you in the center of their lives. Lord, bless them and use them, Father. I pray that, that Colin and Tristan will grow up saying, I want to marry a woman like my mother because she's like Jesus Christ, and I want to be a father like my father because he is like Jesus Christ. Thank you for doing it right now, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for your incredible, great love and for these precious, precious gifts that you have given to David and to Lisa right now, Lord. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. He did great. <laughs> Way to go, Tristan. Yeah. That's huge. That's incredibly, incredibly huge when people do that. We don't have to just dedicate. Some, some of us have come into the church later on in life and we didn't have them as infants. It's never too late to give our kids to the Lord and say, I'm going to teach them. I've seen, I've been at churches where parents had growing kids that came in and said, you know, I didn't do this, but I should have. And, and I'm doing it now. And that's amazing. You know what? Pastor Darren's going to come and he is going to pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Thanking God for answered prayers. You know, because when you follow, uh, look at the Lord's Prayer, and Jesus went and He gave them a whole outline, basically how to pray, and they gave thanks for the bread that He had been given. Thanks for so many things in life. And so Pastor Darren is going to lead us in, in a prayer of thanksgiving, and after that, the Apostles' Creed. This is Hudson. You want to come with me? Let's pray to you. Lord Jesus, thank you that you take care of us. Thank you that you watch over us. Thank you that in everything that we have, it's because you have given it to us. Thank you for the health that we have. Thank you for uh, the, the way that you provide for us financially. Thank you for the jobs that you've given and provided. Pray that you would keep us focused with an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of thankfulness, that we wouldn't get so focused on things we don't have, but we would be distracted away from your goodness, God. We love you, Jesus. Ask these things in your name. Amen. Now, would you join me in saying the Apostles' Creed together? And it will be up on the screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Well, now we're going to celebrate uh, baptism together. This morning, not only do we have the privilege of dedicating uh, a child to the Lord, we have the uh, privilege of seeing a baptism of two young, incredibly great people that have chosen to put their faith in, in Jesus Christ, uh, who uh, I'm excited that they have their grandparents. And so, uh, the Beechers, come on up uh, this morning, Adam and Anna. They're going to come, and they're going to be baptized this day. And, and there's good news, Adam and Anna, the water is not ice cold. <laughs> we, we had the hot water heater fixed, 
and now there is hot water that is in the uh, the baptismal and grandparents if you want to come up so you can get better pictures and be here to celebrate that would be awesome alright which one's older Adam or Anna alright
Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for what you've done in his life. And I pray for uh, his parents that you would just guide and direct them. Give them great wisdom. Give them great wisdom during the teenage years. Because they, they will need it. But Father, through that, I know that you will be with them. And that they will be godly examples to, to Alan right now. Lord Jesus. Bless them. And put a head of protection around them as well. In Jesus' name. And we dedicate Alan Beecher to the Lord right now in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You know what? This is a great victorious time. And I'm going to invite you to stand with me as we, we sing an old hymn of the church, Victory in Jesus, because I thought, you know what? A great thing to celebrate by singing Victory in Jesus and celebrating who He is this morning.
all the time. Let's give God praise one more time for who he is. Lord, you are good, and then we're going to uh, close with a prayer of celebration to God. And by the way, you know, we can celebrate good things that are happening. This week I received an email from uh, the church in Kudapeke, and I told them about uh, our Philippians 1-6 project that we're striving between and during the season to raise $7,000 to, to finish the building and, and to help them out with ministry down there, and $7,000 is a lot of money, but if we all can do our part, it's like it ends up being like $144 uh, per family. We have like 70 or 80 families that are part of this church. So that's 50 families giving $144. That's not much. Uh, I, and it breaks down to about $3.05 a day, less than going to Starbucks for your, your latte cappuccino thing. So it, it's, it, it's, and it goes for a good cost changing lives and uh, Tanya emailed me and she said hey uh, I want to give God praise because there was a gang member that gave his life to Jesus Christ and he'd been living with a woman and, and now we are going to perform the wedding for them because they, they want to do it God's way. Amen. Amen. all the time. Not only is he making a difference here but he's making a difference in Kahutapeke through our sacrifices, our giving, our prayers. Join with us as we sing this song. Remember, you were created to worship.
Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you, giving you joy in your heart, giving you a peace that surpasses all understanding, giving you a love that the world does not understand, both now and forevermore. May you be on fire with, his, with the power of His Holy Spirit, and may you be an example to all that you come in contact with, both now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Go in peace, to love and serve our risen Savior, Lord Jesus Christ.